You know what, by the way? Yeah. I've decided after watching Tony, Sterling Sharp should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. T- Sterling Sharp is the wide receiver of Tony Baselli's left tackle of Terrell Davis's running back. All right. You know, that phenomenal, but just had a crazy injury that didn't allow him to do it for a long time. All right. I like that. We brought up some other names. Um, obviously, Tiki Barber, uh, Otis Anderson, um, Ricky Waters. Like, there's some running back. Roger Craig. Roger you know, Craig. I did this, Dan, I did this on my show on Friday. You know what my big takeaway is? There's a lot of guys that could be in the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah. they're, like I had people calling up, and they were saying Zach Thomas, Abs- Patrick Willis, I mean, DeMarcus Ware. There's a lot of very – Lester Hayes. The only guy I – and most people, you look at their resume and you're like, yeah, that guy could be a Hall – yeah, that guy's a Hall of Famer. The guy I'm not – so you have to tell me, I, I got three calls on Jim Plunkett. Yeah. You think Jim Plunkett's a Hall of Famer? Well, he never even went to a Pro Bowl. He was never considered one of the five or six best. But he won two position. Super Bowls. See, that's the problem. It's like Eli. I don't think Eli was a great quarterback. He didn't lead the league in anything but interceptions. So why is he in? If his yeah, name but is, there was a couple years where mm, Eli went to Pro Bowls yeah. and was considered like there was a few years. Yeah, where but, Eli but was back then, one of the five but best when Jim Plunkett played, you went to the Pro Bowl. You didn't make up an excuse. Therefore, the seventh alternate gets to go to the Pro Bowl. Plunkett, Plunkett is underrated. Yeah, Pauling. I have a wild stat. I just found Eli Manning in his career in the regular season. 117 and 117. He's a 500 quarterback. Jim Plunkett for his career in the regular season, 72 and 72, 500 quarterback. Isn't that unreal? Yeah. I noticed that. But my point is, Dan, there's a lot like Joe Klecko. The guys that really have it rough are the seniors candidates because there's a lot yeah, of are. guys. Well, Joe that Klecko, I think are deserving. Joe Klecko was the best defensive lineman on the sack exchange. Gastineau yes. got all the credit. Joe, you ask any of those offensive linemen, Joe Klecko was a man. I mean, he was a beast there. Um, Zach Thomas, one of the smartest players who's ever played the game. Bingo. Dan, I started at least three games against Zach. He was incredible. He was incredible how instinctive he was, how much he knew what we were running. And you look at his stats. His stats are better than Erlocker. You know what happens? Erlocker, and dude, Erlocker was a great player, but Erlocker became the face of the Bears. And it's Chicago, it's a big market. So Erlocker gets in right away. He didn't have a better career than Zach Thomas did, but Zach Thomas didn't get, you know, wasn't like the marketing darling that Erlocker was. No, I agree. And it's like Joe Namath. Love him, but Joe, to me, was not a Hall of Fame quarterback. He got more interceptions than touchdowns. Uh, he had one great moment, and it, and it was maybe the biggest moment in NFL history. He played in New York. If he doesn't play, if he plays in Cleveland, he's not in the Hall of Fame. But he played in New York. He won that game. He guaranteed it, and you go into the Hall of Fame. So a lot of it is where you play, not yeah. not necessarily when, as much as where you play, and. I think that that factors in as well. But, you know, it, it's tricky because not everybody can get in. But I do think that there are some glaring omissions, and it feels like every every year we're reminded of that.